This is one of the most advanced laboratories in the world. These are the test subjects. And these are the most grueling tests that we could design. What is happening at these camps is an outpatient trial of an innovative technology in the early stages of development that could really change the game for people with type 1 diabetes. <laughs> Type 1 diabetes is a condition in which the pancreas stops making insulin, which is a hormone that lowers blood sugar. And when this happens, people with type 1 diabetes have to manage their blood sugar manually. So they need to check their blood sugar frequently by pricking their skin, and they need to give themselves doses of insulin, either with an insulin pump or a needle. The challenge is to maintain near normal blood sugar levels, but while at the same time minimizing exposure to very low blood sugars, which are acutely dangerous have to think about the amount of glucose in your blood day in and day out, hour after hour after hour. It is an absurd and impossible task. It is the only disease that I know of where you're making dosing decisions with a, with a medicine that can kill you if you get it wrong. And you're doing those decisions 24 seven. We're trying to build a system that as much as possible does not require the person with diabetes to even know what their blood sugars are. This is my bionic pancreas, but we have a name for it. It's called the biopanky to keep it more fun, because diabetes can be fun. I call it the pancreas, the fake pancreas. Um, the front of it is an iPhone that runs a software that they designed, and the back of it is a continuous glucose monitor. The bionic pancreas takes a measurement of blood sugar every five minutes and then makes a decision without involving the person with diabetes in that decision about how much insulin or glucagon to give, regulating their blood sugar 24 hours a day, including at night when they're sleeping or when they're distracted. The T1D program of the Helmsley Charitable Trust aims to accelerate the development of tools and devices to ease the burden of living with T1D. One of the important roles at the Trust is to facilitate collaboration amongst grantees across the T1D landscape. And the bionic pancreas study is a great example of that. It's bringing together an exciting new technology and development with the great work that's being done at these camps. This camp specifically, Clara Barton camp, is for young women, and the Joslyn camp is for young boys, and then all together we make up the Barton Organization for Diabetes Education. We're trying to make people live well with diabetes. First star, really big deal here. So we make a big announcement in the dining hall, so-and-so did their shot in their leg for the first time. So-and-so did this or that. Kids can just sort of be kids. Okay, folks, so we're about to start the bionic pancreas on eight girls. Eight of you are on usual care this week and the other eight are on closed loop control, and you'll be completely controlled by the device for the next five days. Is everybody ready? There's really no better environment to test this device in an adolescent population than in a diabetes camp setting. And they're very, very physically active, so they give lots of challenges to the system uh, that you wouldn't see in many other settings. Looking at the, the performance of the device in the first week has been very encouraging. This system really gets to know your body, and my blood sugars have been great. I think my average for the day, I think, was 120, which is really, really good. I love it a lot because my blood sugar has been really good. Average is 130. If I'm out and playing like at sports, I tend to go low. But if I had like a bio pancreas, it would like treat me so I could keep playing. It's just the dream, I guess, until they have a cure. So my daughter was diagnosed March 23rd, uh, 2007. She was six years old. Five months later, I, my grandmother, Leona Helmsley, died and I became a trustee of a very large trust and as I did diligence it became very clear to me that this was more about everybody living with type 1 and not just my daughter and we had the wherewithal and the ability to actually have a significant impact on this disease. Our major goal because we fully recognize the cure is not happening anytime soon is to ease the burden of managing this disease. This technology would not only ease the burden it would have an absolutely dramatic effect on outcomes. 
I really do firmly believe that we have a lot of good reason to hope that this technology will provide the bridge that we need to get to a cure.